rid of this, shall we? Heavy mo? Thank you, Peter. Well, at least you can spell. Harry Parker, your social worker. I know Harry very well. He says you're bright, says you're worth a bit of bother. And take the time if I were you. Don't be clever, don't be smart. We've no time to waste. Get that. There's plenty of other kids we could be dealing with. If you really want to behave like a moron, we'll put you with all the other morons under lock and key at Hatchmere House. And I can do that. I'll have you transferred to a secure unit. We'll do your assessment from there. If you're going to stay here, let's make it clear. You're going to have to step into line. Not Just fine. a sec. You're going to have to step into line and you're going to have to cooperate. Now, that shouldn't be too difficult. We're a reasonable lot. I'm not signing any contract. Well, let's look at that, shall we? Let's give your intelligence the benefit of the doubt. Mr Parker says you're a bright lad and I respect his opinion. So I have a particular interest in you. Personal. Between the two of us. I want you to prove to me you're worth all the time and effort that we're prepared to put into you. Your big break, this. Does not give you a second chance. All right. All right. Good. So let's take a look at what life's got in store for you. Go back a few steps, see just how clever you've been so far. For a kick-off, you've just been to court, haven't you? When was it? Thursday. Yesterday. Just yesterday you've been to court before, haven't you? Right. Right. Still being clever, still being smart. So what were the most important things that happened to you before you went to court? Can you remember that far back, eh? You started off here at home. H-O-M-E spells home. And there's your mum, your dad, all the rest of them. And just like any other mum and dad, all they ask you to do, all you have to do is to go to school. Now that's not too much to ask, is it? You're clever, bright. Everybody wants you to succeed. Nobody wants a failure on their hands. Get the right qualifications, make your way in the world. But you didn't want to go to school, did you? You knew best. So you started bunking off, out the gate, over the fence. And your teachers are concerned, because they're there to help. They don't want to see you get behind. So they go and see your mum and dad. My teacher's ever been to my house. No matter. They talked to your mum and dad, didn't they? And they told you to get your ass back into school. They know you have to go. But you still didn't listen, out the gate, over the fence. Before you know where you are, your mum and dad get a visit from the education welfare officer. Got a visit from him, didn't you? Yeah. That's right. Because the Ewo's there to make sure you go to school. And if you don't, he gives the nod to the appropriate authority. And that spells trouble. Now, at this point, a lot of kids get a bit of sense. They get themselves together. They get back to school. They listen. But you didn't listen, did you? The education welfare officer visits four, five, six, even seven times, tries to help discover the problem. A lot of time and expense, and all because you don't want to go to school. The EWO reaches his limit. So he sends your parents a letter threatening to take you to court for non-attendance. Well, that does nothing. Absolutely nothing. So there's a summons. And you go for the very first time to court. Your debut. First appearance, send him home for a test attendance, for whatever good that'll do. You're supposed to go to school for 21 days straight, but you foul up after the third or fourth day and back you go again. So, one, two, three, four, five, six breaks. Six chances to get yourself straight, get your ass back into school, and one, two, three, four, five, six times you've blown it. Now, am I not right? Yeah. But you weren't just bunking off, were you? You had to do something with all that free time. So you did a bit of thieving. First two or three times you get caught, you get taken down the nick, and some policeman tells you off, shouts at you. Next time you get a caution. This time a sergeant in full uniform shouts at you. That doesn't make a damn bit of difference, because you're apparently deaf to any kind of reason. You go on nicking and making a general bloody nuisance of yourself, when you should be here learning something useful. But it's burglary, shoplifting, TDA, touching the dog's ass, taking and driving away. And back you go to court. They're getting to know you now. So you get fined or sent to the local police attendance centre. Kept off the streets all day Saturday, made to scrub floors by another loud policeman when you could be watching West Ham lose at home. The magistrates don't know what to do with you. They're all greengrocers and shopkeepers. So, they send you here to us. For... Assessment. So, what are we going to do with you? We could recommend you go home. What? But they won't have you. So, are we going to get rid of you? 
Foster parents? Never. Children's home? A joke. CAG Detention Centre, Borstal. Well, a pity about CAG, Community Home with Education, appealing both to your intellectual brilliance and your public spirit. What used to be called an approved school, a CAG? You could have been king of the mafia. Lots of lick me ass power trips for ambitious young 15 year olds, and you've just turned 16, bad luck. Not much left to bring your line, is there? Short, sharp shock at the local detention centre, a borstal. Two simple lessons you're going to have to learn, DC or Borstal. One, discipline. Two, respect for authority. You're going to have to learn it, so you might as well learn it now. This is an open invitation to you to cooperate, Trevor, for your own good. DC, seven out of ten coming out of detention centres, eight out of ten leaving Borstals, re-offend, commit crimes, that is, within two years. So, here you are, fresh out of Borstal. What's the first thing you're going to need, Peter? A job. A job? Peter, how many unemployed do we have at the moment? Millions. Exactly. So what chance have you got with your spots and your record of getting a job against a lab with O and A levels and a decent haircut? About nil. Optimistic. So, no job. What do you do? Sign on the door. How much is that worth to you? Place to live, food in your gut, a bit of fun, nothing is gone. Broke. No job. No prospects, no cash. So what do you do? And you're back here. And all because you were too damn stupid when you were here, nicking sweets from the local tuck shop. Well, they've tried all this. I know this didn't work, not with you. So what's left? And you're on the bandwagon, boy. And you won't get off. Prison, locked up like an animal. A job. No prospects. Dole. No cash. Thieving. No more chances. Prison. An animal. Round and round you go. Well, those are your options. You've created them. You've brought it all up on yourself. Before you kick another door down, before you kick another chef in the bollocks. Before you do anything. Think. You may not get another chance. Settle down, we'll have another little chat on Monday. Sounds great, when do I start? 